What's going on guys? Crypto Trend Trader back at it again. Just wanted to take a minute here and talk about my second favorite F word, fundamentals. But before we jump in headfirst into this pile of hot garbage, I just want to remind you this is not financial advice. I'm not your financial advisor. These markets are extremely volatile, so please do your own research and trade responsibly. So the ticker symbol is HAS. We're looking at Hasbro, the toy company. It's been in the news all over the place lately and not in a good way. They have basically burned every bridge you could possibly imagine. And without doing anything straight up illegal, this has got to be one of the most hated companies, at least of recent days. They peaked out in January 2022 at about $105. And since then, they've gotten absolutely beaten down to about $58. So roughly 45% from the highs to where we're at right now. Now, that being said, we're going to mostly focus on the fundamentals here, but we do want to take a quick look at the overall technical view. So if we just zoom out here and go to the monthly, this thing is basically just going up and to the right, but on the monthly had that capitulation from the Rona and then put in a lower high after that, which is not necessarily a good sign on the macro. So when we're looking at this right here, it's not necessarily great, but we have been sort of trading inside of this ascending channel here. And then it sort of turned into a descending channel with the exception of this crazy wick right here, liquidity issue. It's basically been respecting this channel pretty good. Now, that being said, from the low back in 2001, after the dot-com bubble burst, this thing has basically just gone parabolic for the last 20-something years. And now here, it looks like we're starting to correct that parabola. And we see based on our FIB from the low in 2001 to the all-time high here in 2019, we basically came down and corrected the 236. And actually, we wicked down almost perfectly to the 382 as well. So it's not crazy to think that this thing is headed down to like $45 or potentially even the 0.5 at like 32. So that being said, if we zoom out here though, we have threatened the monthly 200 exponential and simple moving average a few times in the past. So it's not unheard of for us to come down to these levels and then actually to end up being a great buying opportunity long-term. Now, obviously we don't know if that's the case. We're not really looking at the long-term technicals of this company. Like, do you think Hasbro is just gonna stop making toys, stop making money and just go away? Probably not. So if we just go back over here to the daily and take a look at the earnings, we see their reporting earnings on the 16th, which is tomorrow. So if you didn't watch this video in time, it's probably too late and you might as well just turn it off now. Matter of fact, Go ahead and check the price on Hasbro and see if I was right. And if I am, leave a comment down below because, well, I probably am. So what we want to actually look at here is just some pretty simple stuff. We're going to go to the quarterly and just take a look at their financials. And all we're looking for is what is Q4 2022 going to be? So there's some ways we can kind of calculate that and get a decent idea. So if we look at Q4 of 2021, we see it was $2 billion with $82 million in net profit. And Q3 of 2021 was about $2 billion with $253 million in net profit. So what if we compare that Q3 to our current Q3 and see if they're close? Well, the Q3 in 2021 was about $2 billion and $253 million in profits. And the Q3 2022 was about $1.6 billion with about $129 million. So we see the margin was definitely a big factor as well. It was about 13% back here. And now it's much, much closer to about like 7, 8%. So we're not necessarily going to get the best comparison, just trying to estimate based off of Q4 2021. But if we go out here to the annual real quick, and we just look at sort of like historical numbers, we can see their profit margin actually has varied quite a bit. In 2017, it was about 8%, then 2018, 5%, 2019 was crazy at 11%, then we see 4% in 2020. And now here in 2021, it was 6.68%. So about 7%. And now what if we look at what we have so far for Q2? We have 5.26% in Q1 of 2022. We have 10.6% in Q2 of 2022. And then we have 7.71% in Q3 of 2022. So what if we just basically take those and just kind of like wait them out to see? Well, here we have 1.16 billion with 5% profits. Here we have 1.34 billion with 10% profits. So if we just basically add those up together and then divide by two, we can get a rough like 7.5% profit margin. And then we just look in here, we have about 7.5% profit margin as well. So essentially for 2022, we're right around 7.5% profit margin. So what if we take our revenue also and just kind of add that up? So we're going to take 1.16 plus 1.34 
plus 1.67, and that gives us 4.17 billion. So now if we go out to annual, well, they're at 6.42 billion for 2021. So unless we clear over 2.2 billion, uh, we're actually going to have like lower revenue year over year than we did in 2021. So that's not necessarily a good thing. Now, what if we go down here to the revenue estimate and see what the analysts are saying? Well, they're estimating about 1.72 billion, which is obviously less than 2 billion. Let's just say the analysts nail it and they're exactly right. And we add that 1.72 billion onto our previous number. We're going to get a total of 5.89 billion. So if we look here, 6.42 billion was the revenue in 2021. So it's probably going to come in less than that. But honestly, people don't really care about revenue nearly as much as they care about net income. So let's just do the same thing quarterly for the net income as well. So we're going to take our 61 million plus 142 million plus 129 million. And that comes out to 332 million. And then what if we just take our analyst estimate of 1.72 billion and we just multiply that by roughly 7.5% profit margin. That's going to give us 129 million. So then if we just take that 129 million and we just add that to the 332 million, we get 461 million. So then if we just go back out to our annual here and we see net income last year was 428 million. So if we come in at 461 million, it's going to be about a 33 million beat over the prior year and like 7% net income up. And that's just assuming that we come in at that 7.5% profit margin roughly which realistically, if we already have like 330 million logged in and we're expecting somewhere around like another 120 million or something like that, uh, really, unless it comes in extremely, extremely high or extremely, extremely low, it's probably not going to move that margin percent by more than like 1% in either direction. So overall, it seems like a pretty much gimme that the revenue may come in less than last year, probably does but that the net income is going to come in higher as well as the profit margin coming in higher as well. And I know what you're thinking. Who cares? Why are we even looking at this? Well, there might be an opportunity for us to make some money based off of not only the fundamentals in this case, but also the technicals. So if we just zoom back out here and take a look at our chart on the daily, we can see that we are trading inside of this descending channel. And here we are basically at the bottom of the channel. So if we are just going to bounce one more time back up to the top of the channel, which is essentially what we've been doing from the top to the bottom, then to the top again, then back to the bottom. I mean, obviously we could fall at the bottom and it goes down to our target to the downside, but there's definitely a possibility it's getting ready to surge to the upside. So even if we just look for a small short-term move, we're looking at about 14% upside. Back to the 200s on the daily and the heart line is about 24% upside. And then all the way back to the top of the channel, it's like 60 plus percent upside. And honestly, if we start closing a daily below $52 and roughly like 35 cents, uh, that's essentially going to be like new lows on the daily, at least from this recent breakdown. And we're probably headed much lower, at least to the 382, if not down here to the 0.5, like we discussed earlier. So that being said, we could run a pretty tight stop loss at about 9.71% with an upside target of 30 or even 60%. It's going to give us essentially like a 3 or even 6 to 1 risk reward ratio. So Hasbro is getting ready to report tomorrow and they might miss on earnings or revenue. But honestly, I think there's enough of a catalyst here that more likely than not, we're going to see some kind of like upside bounce or move. Now, obviously, if the markets just start violently selling off tomorrow, everything just capitulates. Sure, we'll definitely get stopped out. But if not, there's definitely some potential upside here for like 20, 30, even 60%. So that's it. Just want to take a look at this dumpster fire of a company, Hasbro, one of the worst toy companies in existence, by far the worst reputation, constantly in the media and community, just flaming it up left and right. So what does that tell me? Maybe we have reached peak negative sentiment and we're getting ready for a pushback to the upside. Honestly, the technicals on longer time frames don't look great, but there's definitely some potential here, at least a little meat on the bone for a quick move to the upside. So obviously none of this financial advice. I'm not your financial advisor. These markets are extremely volatile. Please do your own research and trade responsibly. Hasbro is probably just going to go to zero immediately tomorrow as soon as they report because they're just going to report that they're a trash company and they're a total dumpster fire and there's no way that anyone could put out the flames. But just in case that doesn't happen, there's definitely some potential here to make money. So yeah, that's it. Just want to talk about a quick trade opportunity based on fundamentals and technicals.
So if you're out there and you're just itching to own a piece of a complete trash company with horrible reputation, maybe this is the one for you. All right, that's all. Just want to talk about Hasbro for a minute. Later.